first into the tank tonight is ambitious tech entrepreneur Billy. She's already an international name. Now she wants to take her business global as well. Once upon a time, I was compared to Elon Musk. I was nominated as Fast Company's most important person in technology, under 30 at the time. If the Sharks invest in us, because we are such an early stage and world first company, they'd be truly believing and designing a better version of the future. Hello, Sharks. Lovely to meet you all. My name's Billy Whitehouse. I'm the CEO and founder of a company called Wearable X. Today, I'm going to ask to raise $1.8 million for 18% of my business. <laughs> okay, so Nardi X is a yoga line that pairs with your smartphone via the app. Nardi X has woven in technology for yoga pants. So there are sensors throughout the hips, the knees and the ankles, as well as haptic feedback. And haptic feedback is just a fancy word for vibrational communication on the body. So if you're practicing at home, you don't get the expertise of the teacher, but the pants provide the touch of the teacher so you can practice anywhere, anytime on your own terms. We've done $70,000 worth of sales and we're here really excited to present to you because I think I could learn something from all of you. Would anyone like to have a go? I would love to, I'd love to give it a go actually. I do a bit of yoga, right? So I'd love to sort of be convinced. Absolutely, yes, let's do that. This will be good. <laughs> beautiful, for yeah. you. Okay. And then beautiful. we'll come back and we'll connect you with your smartphone. All right, beautiful. It's a pretty big valuation you put out there, $10 million. You're after 1.8 million. Yeah, so we've done a really minimal marketing spend so far yep. and sold $70,000 worth of product. I personally think that we're about to actually hit mass market. And where are you from? I am a Sydney-born girl, um, but I've been in the States now for almost five years. What took you there? Blind ambition. Oh, blind ambition, <laughs> right, okay. Last year, we were nominated by Fast Company as one of the most innovative companies in fitness. Um, so previously, uh, we started in a slightly more risque uh, business. Risque? Oh. Yes, we were making uh, vibrating underpants for couples in long distance relationships. Hang on, hang on a minute, hang on. <laughs> Vi vibrating underwear mm -hmm. for couples in long distance. Now that is very creative. <laughs> Thank you. Hang on, I, I'm, I'm trying to get this. Um, it was an insertable piece of a technology that went into our custom underwear and you could control each other from vast distances. Oh my god. Wow. Um, yeah. Hey! Oh, about time. Hey. Oh, How do I feel? It makes you feel really comfortable. Yeah. All right, so I can feel that there's things in it. Can you explain the product? Absolutely. Let's connect you to your Pulse. This is a Pulse. It has the battery and the Bluetooth module, so it can communicate back with your smartphone. So this clip's just behind your left knee. Oh, OK. I'd, I'd, I'd love to see how that works. I, I'm... Absolutely. Let's do a demo, 100%. Um, so the, this is, in fact, isn't the sensor. The sensors are woven in through the ankles down here, behind the knees and in the hips. The pose library sits within the app and there's 30 poses in the library that you can learn step by step, one by yeah. one. So, I mean, let's just do a warrior. For, OK, let's do it's, that. It's a beginner pose and it can start you off. Yep. Take a large step forward with your left foot making sure you're able to bend your left knee to align with your ankle. Yep, I can feel it. Sweep up your arms while being sure to engage your back leg. OK, so it's vibrating at certain points, so what's it trying to tell me? It's trying to show you where to focus and activate those muscles. Yep. So what we've seen in our research is that people are practising yoga and they're either doing it really quickly yep. or they're not really paying attention to what's going on with their body. Yep. So what you're talking about is not necessarily replacing a class. You're talking about the daily adjustments that maybe only a teacher would give you. Exactly. Fine-tuning. All right. I look at this here, that there's a couple of poses I'm thinking about that this might be in the way. Is that sort of... Have you sort of considered those We sort definitely of have. So if I did a tripod headstand, <laughs> would that have any advantage for me? Let's see that. Here we go. Oh, she's going to do it. Wow! OK, yeah, I'm impressed. <laughs> Bloody hell, Janine. Well, there that. you go. <laughs> <laughs> Got to drink a lot of smoothies to do that. There are four or five, sometimes there are six steps to move into each pose. Wow. What the vibrations do is they direct your attention to what part of the body you should focus on. That hurt? No. Then the last step actually reads your body, so the sensors are all talking to each other. 
That's when we're detecting whether you made it into the pose or not. How do they make you feel? Yeah, look, they're, they're super comfortable. And, and interesting, you can feel that there's things in there, but you can't feel that it's on there. Yeah. So, no, well done. Yeah, and well done to you. Oh, mate. Great job, Janine. Yeah, I'm exhausted just watching you, actually. <laughs> The, the only thing I'm trying to understand about the, the, the product itself is how it can make you better. Right now, it's very targeted. It's someone who wants to get into yoga, not someone who does yoga. Absolutely. It's beginners and intermediates. Right, OK. Or people that do it at home. Let's have a look at the numbers. Let's do it. So why and how are we going to justify a $10 million valuation? doing somewhat conservative projections. In the first year, we're planning to do $1.6 million in sales and selling 4,000 units. Um, so we're at $7 million for the year after that, selling up to 12,000 units. So, Billy, the $10 million valuation now is based on the hope of what's going to happen in the future. It's based on the the sophistication of the platform. Now I got that because at the end of the day, no matter how sophisticated the platform is, it's all about return on investment for an investor. How many sensors are there? There are five sensors. That's not many, is it? It's actually the most that's on the market. Yeah, really? Okay. Yeah. I have a mild electronics background, just to let you know, so <laughs> know. I'm keen to understand the science here, or the engineering anyway. Do you want to go and put a pair on, Steve? No, I don't actually. No, I don't want him to either. There's a positional element to it, so it knows where your ankle is compared to your knee, and Precisely. therefore it, it... How does it know that? Is there some sort of strain gauge, or is it a measurement We've, thing? Um, We've collected enough data on hundreds of different yogis. I just know, I just know how the tech works. I, I know intimately how the tech works. Right, so could, 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 could your software tell if my leg's there or there? Yes. Oh, I call rubbish. So what we do when it's reading your body, if you make it into the pose, which Janine did perfectly, then it says, congratulations, you can move on to the next pose. If you didn't make it into the pose, which is how we can tell what your body is doing. Bodies are subtly different, right? Well, there's no such thing as an average person, mm. right? Yeah. So it's, there's no such thing as an average limb length or anything along those lines. So do you have to calibrate it before you start? So you don't need to calibrate it because of the amount of data that we've collected. Oh, no. But there's, there's a technology that allows you to understand the position of those sensors. It's a software. I want to understand... Machine the learning. OK, you're using... You, you are driving square pegs in a round holes right now, what you're saying, OK? Is there someone else you've got here who actually understands the tech? Because you don't at this point in time. Ooh, it's a bit harsh. I'm surprised that you say that, because I... No, I've no, spent no what, five what I'm saying is... What I'm this. saying is I'm, I'm asking about the technology, fundamentally. The technology. How does it work? We have 99% accuracy every time. Oh. Uh, if you do understand the tech, you've described it exceptionally poorly today. You, you really have. He's tough, isn't he? So um, that, that concerns me a lot. I wish you all the best, Billy, but I'm, I'm done. I'm out. OK, thanks, Steve. Billy, so you, you've asked for $1.8 million for 18%, which values at $10 million. How will I get my $1.8 million plus my bump? When she flicks the company to Lululemon. <laughs> we're doing conservative projections for the first few years because we're still young, we're still new. Uh, but year three is when we see truly exponential growth. And that's when the market, honestly, it's already started listening. The bigger brands like your Lulus and your Nikes have certainly paid attention to us. Um, and they're even saying that 2019 is the year that this explodes. OK. Billy, I can tell you where I'm at. Um, look, congratulations. I love the... Sydney girl made good. Um, for me, you know, the valuation says, you know, risk reward for me is not where I need it to be. I wish you well, but I'm out. Thank you. You are a very impressive person and the pitch has been very impressive. I certainly, I believe your story and you are seriously a good entrepreneur. Um, you don't have a golf product yet. That would have been probably more appealing <laughs> to me than yoga just don't quite understand it. And I guess because I don't quite understand 
the marketplace for this product. I just can't invest. So unfortunately, today I'm out. Thanks, Glenn. Good luck. Thank you. So, Billy, what a wonderful export you are. <laughs> you know, I'm really proud that you're Australian and representing us overseas. I think that's absolutely fabulous. But just saying, trust me, it works doesn't quite cut it. <laughs> so, thank you so much for coming, but I'm out. Oh, thank you, Naomi. And then there was Janine. Billy, God, you're, you're very impressive and Look, the yoga industry is massive. You're certainly in the right category. I live this world. You know, I, I'm actually only qualified for one thing in my whole life, and that's a yoga instructor, which is... She's <laughs> had, right? That's it. That's the only <laughs> thing I'm qualified for. So, yeah, so it's my passion, and, I, you know, I live it and love it. I think what is really good is that the vibration on it will actually help people, because other people get injured in yoga because they don't know how to move it, so I think that you're on the right track. Let's invest it. But because of the ask is 1.8, it's, it's an a $10 million valuation when you haven't actually proven sales just yet. I needed to see more proof in sales. I'm out. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Billy. All the best. <laughs> oh, well, good luck to her. I think she should have stuck with the vibrating underwear myself. That was the that was the killer app. That's actually a really good idea. Not a bad idea. So not getting a deal today isn't going to stop us. We're going to keep going, and we're just going to have to sell a lot of yoga pants. First into the tank tonight are fitness buddies Jack and James, ready to flex their business muscles for the sharks. I think we've got this in the bag. I'm sure they will be able to see a deal in us and we can hopefully see a deal in them too. We can't really lose. We either get a deal or we get really good publicity and I'll be able to use it on my Tinder profile. I'll be getting deals left, right and centre. Hi, I'm James. And I'm Jack. And we are The Body Consultants. Today we are seeking a 500k active investment for 25% of our company. This gives us a valuation of $2 million based on our EBITDA. Right. Our purpose at The Body Consultants is to elevate the human status quo. And we do that by combining our core four, which is training, nutrition, mindset and lifestyle, to bring to market an offering that's never been done before and poorly been executed in the industry at the moment. As personal trainers, we get to boast a 60% retention rate, charging five times our closest competitors. Our journey started back in 2014 with a boot camp and a dream. Since then, we've grown our training centres to five personal training centres over both Australia and New Zealand. Taking our revenues from 500,000 in the first year to two million currently. Mm, okay. With this Sharks, we've already had investors that are looking to buy in, but we believe the right investor and the right fit for us is in this room today. Oh, thank you. Over to you guys. <laughs> Over to us. Oh, great. Uh, I, are these screens going to do anything? <laughs> well, our belief is you're buying us. <laughs> oh, we're buying you too. Ideal situation, you'll give us 100k. 5% each. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, I'm going to give you nothing, mate. You, you are selling a piece of your company? Yep. Right, and I'm buying it. Absolutely. No, I'm not Santa Claus, all right? I don't give a shit. It's a sales process. Investment's yeah, sure. a serious sales process. Yeah. Please treat it as such. So, uh, who are you and what are you? We are we were personal trainers. Personal trainers? Yep. Where are you based? In Perth. In Perth. Oh, right. Yep. yep. Mm. So, how old are you guys? So, I'm 24. 24? 26. OK, pretty young guys. And, and, and personal fitness trainers for how long? So since I was 19. Since 19. I was 19. OK, so yeah. you've got a bit of experience. So how do you go coaching, you know, the average 50-year-old that... Um... That wants to touch their toes? <laughs> <laughs> we, we go... You should like... say something more denigrating. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. That's the, generally, they just want to move a little bit better, feel a little bit better. What, what do you do? Oh, I pick up my grandkids. Not a 50. 
uh, at this position, 56 <laughs> year old, whatever. Um, so yeah, like we just, again, that's where we can tailor it to the client. Okay. So, so just give us a quick bit of it. You said you're charging five times what a competitor charges. Who are you seeing as your competitor when you're making that statement? So we look at just like your regular gym membership. That's right. What... So it's a gym membership, say, grand a year? Yep. So we charge five grand a year. How are you able to charge five times more than your other competitors yep. and get a 60% retention? So help yep. me understand that. Yeah, so with our competition, you get a key tag, you scan in, you don't come, you went on holidays, no one cares, they'll only call you when your debit bounces. Every single session between 7.45 and 8 o'clock, our trainers call our clients. If they weren't there, they find out why they're not doing what they signed up to do and they committed to do. And that is the big difference. We're not selling training, we're not selling nutrition, we're selling relationship and accountability. But that's not different. That's not there's, different, It's not it? really different to a million other personal trainers, consultants out there. So what's your like for like year on year for each of those locations? How do you mean, sorry? What's your like for like year on year? Well, maybe the answer to the question is month on month. Is it going up sideways or down? So each dinner gets to about 10 grand and then trends sideways. Ah, trends yep. sideways. So you, you reach maximum capacity. Well, they don't grow any bigger, so that's the model. I think you're both incredibly naive. The first rule of business is to respect the competition. And really, you have no understanding in terms of the contribution or the relationship that many personal trainers have. There is nothing like experience. So therefore, I'm out. Thank you very much. Thank you. I reckon Naomi's, that's just way too harsh. You've got five centres, two million revenue. You, you sound like you know what you're doing. Where'd you learn your business? So yeah, like again, we've invested every single centre to our personal growth. Our first mentor taught us sales marketing. That was a six-figure investment over the year. Sorry, six-figure investment? Oh, wow, well, we'll go back to that. How does that work? Did you pay that to him? Correct. Yeah. What? Wow. And how, so how much have you invested? Ourselves. I would say we're up to the tune of 350. $350,000. So, yeah, we would have, if so, you could on, name it. Let me just say that again slowly. <laughs> you have invested $350,000. Yes, I would say it at least. Wow. It's not in the business. That's on us. And that's not capital. That's personal development. Oh, I see. Your own personal development. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Just quickly, you, you said one thing before. You said that your valuation was based off EBITDA. Jack, yep. what do you what do you do to have fun? Because you look so tense. Oh, I have been told that a lot of times, um, but I am a lot of fun. My mum calls me Cyclone Jack because I am just destruction. The, I've been told so many times, how are you like this at 5:30 in the morning? I'm like, it is showtime. <laughs> Can we get back to the EBITDA question? Yep. No, stop it. No, he's gone back to robot. <laughs> no, no, I want to know the guys I want to work right. with, potentially. Oh, make an offer then and find it out. Yeah. <laughs> Jack is sort of goes, you're like a box, and then you smile and you go, oh, he's human, and then you're robot again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a question now? Or? No, not yet. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> your shoelaces are even perfectly bowed. <laughs> he's not socks on, though. <laughs> Can we do the EBITDA thing now? Steve wants to ask you about the EBITDA. Come on, Steve, go for it. No, you said, you said one thing. You said your valuation's based on EBITDA. You yep. put that right out at the front. Yep. Right, we, we, we've walked your hand, held your hand through your little business journey here. Let's just explain of... EBITDA, Steve. But EBITDA is basically uh, your profit or interest tax depreciation amortization, otherwise known as free cash flow. So, um, why is it based on that? So yeah, all of our shops at a minimum can make $100,000 a year profit. Right, so you're getting uh, $100,000 in free cash flow per location. Uh, you've got five locations, which means you've got uh, 500 grand in free cash flow per year. Correct. It's bloody fantastic. And the other thing is the industry standard for a trainer, a career, lasting in the industry is nine months. Yeah, sub 12 months. months. 
Really? You join the industry within nine months, so like 80% are out. Yeah, which is where your double-edged sword is, actually. Just to counter that, our average staff has been, or average trainer has been with us um, over two years. Four for the longer ones, and then obviously at the new centres. Yeah, but that's in Perth with you, with them all the time. I really loved hearing what you guys have done, and congratulations on the success of the business. I think you've done a, an amazing job. The double-edged sword part comes from scalability, and I don't think it's scalable. As you said, those personal trainers that you're going to be trying to get in Melbourne, Sydney, everywhere, won't actually be able to stay and commit like you guys, because I think you guys are really unique, and that's why you're successful. So it's because of the scalability, I don't think I can invest, but good luck and well done. I'm out. Cool. Thank you very much. You know, I, I find you guys amazing. I can't actually fault your business model or even your valuation. My challenge is the same as Janine's. Uh, I think the business is highly dependent on you too. I wish you well, but I'm out. Thank you. Guys, well done. You know, you've developed systems to support a rollout plan. I've got so many health-related businesses across Australia <laughs> in so many sites. I really don't need another one. Yep. Uh, I'm not going to be, a, be an investor today. I'm out. But good luck. Thank you. Thank, much. You. Thank you. So four sharks are out. We have one shark left. Steve. Well, I think always in business, first impressions are massive, right? And that, you, you came out, you felt a bit cocky when you came out, and that really, that put me offside. Um, you've done a lot to, to come back from But then that. he smiles, and quite like <laughs> um, That's our first time, guys. I'm trying to find reasons to do the deal and not do the deal at the same time. But I, I've, I've looked at the numbers here and I just think it's, it, it's, it seems really good. And really good's, it's never really good. It's business, right? It's hard, it's meant to be hard. Um, I, I learned a long time ago that, that my first impression is usually one I have to follow. And so I probably can't get, I can't get past that. I'm out, guys, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, gentlemen. Guys, good good luck. Thank, Thank you. You don't Take need care. it, you'll be fine. Well done. Oh, well. Uh, you guys are harsh. You guys are harsh. How, where did you, how did you like to work with them? What was your I would have been, I, absolutely no problem. I, you know what I like? That humble arrogance of the 20-year-olds that need a bit of active mentoring, they will listen. Uh, no, they won't. They will listen. Yeah, oh, well. So we'll just do what we're going to do anyway. Next into the tank is Darwin saleswoman Heidi, who's come up with a concept as Australian as the stubby holder. My product is definitely unique. It's something out there that um, should have been invented probably a very long time ago. Every Australian will want one of these if they do enjoy an ice cold drink because this is going to be beneficial to them. Hi, I'm Heidi, and I'm the owner and inventor of the Ice Bucket Skin. We as Australians do enjoy an ice cold drink, and there's nothing better than sharing a bottle with friends. So whether you're out at a venue or at home, to keep the bottle icy cold, we use ice buckets. The problem with the ice buckets is the condensation. Pools all over the table can end up on the floor, which is an OH&S risk. Worst case scenario could be someone slipping over from water on the floor. So, I've invented the ice bucket skin. It is made from a material that is 0.002% impervious to water, thus ridding the condensation problem. The best thing about it after that, though, is it's also available to logo up. So you can have logos, advertising, patterns and designs to appeal to the marketplace out there. Everyone in the home has a stubby cooler. Next thing they'll have at home is going to be the ice bucket skin. So I'm asking for $260,000 for 10% of my business. Whoa. 
I can sell ice to Eskimos, so I know I can sell this product. So what I need is funding and also your expertise to get this to Australia, and then it will go to the world. OK. Thanks very much, Heidi. Uh, g'day, I'm Steve. How are you doing? Good, thanks, Steve. Um, and so you're looking for $260,000 for 10%? Yes. 2.6 million bucks. Right, we'll get into that a bit later, but what, what, uh, what do you do at the moment? You've got a, a job currently? Yes, I'm a full-time job in Darwin and office work at the moment. Um, my background is sales, though. What sort of sales? Um, I was actually the first female car salesperson in Darwin. Ooh. The first female car salesperson in Darwin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Well done. So what made you think that I'd have to solve the condensation on the ice bucket problem? Because not everyone wakes up in the morning and says, <laughs> I have to solve the condensation on the ice bucket problem, right? <laughs> I mean, it's something that's out there that I don't think anyone's actually realised is a problem. So for me going out and enjoying a drink with friends, I sit at a bar or at a table at a restaurant the ice bucket's in the middle of the table, the water's pooling, it ends up in my lap. Right, so is it actually a problem? <laughs> yes, it is a problem. Well, we'll know if it's a problem if the people in the hotels actually want it. Yes. So, what have they said? I've had nothing but fantastic reviews for the product. So I have basically got about 10 venues in Darwin that have been using it, and I've spoken to the publican on many occasions, and he is quite in awe of it. Hmm. So, Heidi, um, this is your invention. Yes. So what have you done to protect it? Um, so I have a patent on it. OK. What's the patent over? The patent is money for the material it's made from. Surely there's prior art that's similar to cover a bucket out there. Someone out can go out there and make another, like a stubby cooler skin for an ice bucket out of neoprene or something like that. Mm -hmm. But out of this material here that I've chosen, EVA... Oh, I think that paint attorney has done you a massive disservice. And all paint attorneys out there, stop it! <laughs> for God's sake, stop ripping off entrepreneurs. You can't paint in simple shit. How much did he charge you for it? Um, I just went online and did it. It was under $500. You did it painting. yourself? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, paint attorneys. That's all done. <laughs> You've done so well. <laughs> so how many have you sold? I had a thousand of them made from China, brought them into Darwin. So you ordered a thousand before you tried and tested the product? I had tried and tested my prototypes at home. Right. But I ordered a thousand in because I wanted to get them into some venues and see how they went. So how many of the thousand have you sold? I only sold 200 of them. OK. And about 100 actually given away as well. Uh oh. So you've got 700 left in stock? Yes. Heidi, I get that you want some help, but how do you value your business at 2.6 million? When you've sold 100, given away 100, <laughs> it's been going two years and you've still got seven in stock. I mean, I mean, is there some magic formula to this? Is there something we're not seeing? The magic formula hasn't happened yet because what's happened is... Please explain. I had to have it tried and tested first, so in my head I knew that this product was saleable and that I was confident yes, selling it. Yes, the 2.6 million I'm yep, talking about. Yeah, the 2.6 million. So I've been to an accountant. Oh, no. No, no, no. And All he's right. actually drawn oh, up my well. figures. Oh, don't do it. That changes everything. No, but I had to have him work out figures. He said to me, um, basically, um, I can sell at least 100,000 in the first year. So, Heidi, I'm still waiting for the justification of the 2.6 million valuation because you did your spreadsheet with your accountant. Yep. But do you have a purchase order? No, I don't. It's, you've got so many there you could have sold already. When someone says to you, business is worth 2.6 million, and I don't have really a firm purchase order, that's correct, surely yeah. if you have this screaming voice that says to you, that sounds like bullshit. Heidi has invented a stubby holder for ice buckets. The sharks like the idea, but her numbers are full of holes. When someone says to you, business is worth 2.6 million, and I don't have really a firm purchase order, That's correct, surely yeah. if you have this screaming voice that says to you, that sounds like bullshit. OK. <laughs> 
So why do you think you will sell 100,000? Because it's something that is unique to the market that I know once I get out there and start actually selling the product. And to sell it door to door and individual to pubs and clubs is basically out of the question. It's too much for me to do. When you're an entrepreneur and when you're starting a business, nothing is too much, okay? The reality is what great entrepreneurs do is race around Australia, lock in all the pubs and clubs that are interested in this product. Next thing, you've got an open order for at least 10,000 of them. Yes. Job's done, and you're going to have a nice profit margin. Who is the accountant? Is it a suburban accountant, or is it one of the big... big... He's from a worldwide firm. All right, here's a message to those pillocks. Please stop giving unrealistic valuations to entrepreneurs. Get real with your bloody valuations. On that, Heidi... Yes. I'm going to actually declare myself out. Uh, I wish you all the best. And have a good day. No worries. You're a classic entrepreneur. Got excited. Lots of activity without any execution. There is a point in life where you come to where you figure you're ready to do something, and that's the point I'm at now. The last couple of years have been thinking about the product, inventing the product, getting it made, then making sure the product will work. OK, good. It's now my time. You know, a lot of people go, I have an idea, and they spend their whole life having an idea and never doing something about it. So you're right, it's your time. Yes. You've just started on your journey, your business journey. You don't know yet what you don't know. But your accountant has done you a disservice. Yeah, because you've relied on him as an expert to give you advice, and he has given you terrible advice. Terrible. He has made this pitch today for you uninvestable. I'm sorry I'm out. OK. You've come up with a, with a really cracking idea. There's some things that aren't quite working, but so... So tell me, how much money have you put into this? Not a lot. OK. Um, I've only spent probably over $10,000, so I have not invested a lot of money. But you're after us to invest a lot of money. I know, but you're going to make a lot of money. <laughs> you see, often people come and ask for our money as investors, and yet they don't put their hand in their own pocket and they wouldn't risk their own capital. You've invested $10,000, but would you invest $2.6 in this? Um, you know, I would have to do a lot of work. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of work too. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of the point. You know, when somebody comes before us and they won't spend their own money but they're happy to spend ours, it's not the way I want to start a partnership. Yeah. It's not an investment for me. I'm out. OK, thank you. So three sharks are out, you've got two sharks left. I actually love the product. I think it, without any branding on it, it looks very smart sitting on a restaurant table. Yes. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the product. So, so yeah. you know, you've done... Uh, fabulous. And you've yeah. had this innovation. You've got it up. Well done. Because that's hard. If you'd turned up on this show with purchase orders for $260,000, I would have been actually interested. You've turned up the day with a great product, but I'm not ready to put my money into your business. I'm out. OK. If you believe someone who gives you a valuation of 2.6 million, then I would worry about you as a business partner because, frankly, it's a ludicrous valuation. I just find it a little bit kind of uh, hard to grasp. I'm out. OK. Good luck, Heidi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for coming to the Shark Tank. All right, no worries. See you later. See you. I guess I do have a lot more to learn. I am a salesperson, I'm not a business person, so I need to get a business hat on. I, I took on Steve's persona then, didn't I? I was getting very frustrated. You were getting quite grumpy, Andrew. Grumpy, Andrew. But we got, didn't get grumpy at her, we got grumpy at the situation. Watch this space, you'll be seeing my product out there. <laughs>